breast density and breast cancer information. This analysis of focus group participants' responses and intentions after being presented with detailed breast density information suggested that the majority of Australian women would feel some level of anxiousness if they were notified of having dense breasts. This was mainly driven by the psychological impact of the possibility or increased risk of cancer. In previous studies, it has been shown that providing breast density notification and accompanying information can improve knowledge about the reduced sensitivity of mammography in dense breasts and the increased risk of breast cancer. However, this may also increase women's anxiety and confusion. In order to mitigate any unintended outcomes, such as anxiety, the phrasing of the breast density notifications should be carefully crafted to enhance the understanding of the notifications so that the women are accurately informed. In a quantitative study conducted in the USA, anxiety was reported to be the driving factor towards women's intentions for additional supplemental screening, emphasizing the significance of anxiety in potential decision-making. In the present study, many women reported greater anxiety if they also reported other risk factors for breast cancer, such as family history. Some women also reported that the reduced sensitivity of the mammogram would make them anxious. On the other hand, there were women who believed that breast density notification would help them stay more aware regarding their bodies and be more informed about their breast health. When the women were asked what they would do upon being notified of having dense breasts, most women said that being guided by their doctors and obtaining their recommendations would be the first step they would take, followed by an inclination towards additional screening. An Australian study from the state of Western Australia, where they currently notify women of their breast density, found that half of women notified consulted or intended to consult with their general practitioner, GP, and, of those, 50% were referred for supplemental screening and 20% reported having an ultrasound. Of concern, however, is that important gaps still exist in general practitioner GP, knowledge about breast density and confidence in having discussions with women about the implications, and the current lack of evidence-based management guidelines for GPs. Interestingly, in our study, a few women would favor having mammograms on a yearly basis rather than having them every two years. This could be due to the downsides of supplemental screening presented to the participants and may reflect a lack of understanding of the potential harms of mammography screening for women with high breast density. Annual mammograms in women with dense breasts at average risk are not likely to improve outcomes compared to biennial screenings, in terms of the balance between harms and benefits of screening. Furthermore, additional findings from these focus groups reported elsewhere also demonstrated that women emphasized the right to know about any information regarding their bodies and felt that breast density should be measured and reported as part of the routine screening. In general, women opted for additional supplemental screening for their own reassurance. These findings were consistent with some of the common themes that emerged in this research wishing to be informed about their body, taking precautions, finding peace of mind, and being able to rule out cancer. It also indicated that despite being presented with potential drawbacks of supplemental screening including the increased risk of false positives and overdiagnosis, most women prefer to focus on true positives, and would rather be overdiagnosed than underdiagnosed when it comes to breast cancer. This was not surprising as most adults believe that routine cancer screening is always a good idea, as finding the cancer early saves lives. For other women, however, the decision was heavily dependent on the existing screening results or on whether they had any symptoms. It should also be noted that harms related to false positives and overdiagnosis were the primary reasons for women not wanting to proceed with supplemental screening should they be notified of having dense breasts. False positive results are much more common in women who have dense breasts, and about half of the women getting screened over a 10-year period could have had a false positive report at some point. The unfavorable reactions to a false positive result, coupled with physical discomfort and potential out-of-pocket costs that was discussed amongst the women during the focus group, likely influenced this response. This research has both limitations and strengths.
This study was conducted only in Australia. Hence, forming generalized conclusions about all women around the globe is not possible, and research conducted in other regions may not be comparable. However, similar findings in studies from the USA provide reassurance that the findings are more generalizable. The study sample was also demographically reasonably representative of the Australian population. It should be noted that there was a small sample size of 78 women for this research. Moreover, women's responses were short and were recorded online. This leads to some ambiguity among any conclusion driven from those responses. Therefore, the research team predicts that in-person responses will lead to different and more varied results. Despite the limitations, there were multiple strengths of the project. Active participation by the women involved in this study increased their awareness towards breast density. Furthermore, the researchers indicated almost perfect agreement. This demonstrates the results are highly reliable and have internal validity in terms of the coding method. Conclusions It is important that health systems with population-based breast screening programs currently considering the impacts of widespread breast density notification are aware that informing women about having dense breasts using evidence-based information may still pose a risk of anxiety for some women. While for others, this may be a valued opportunity to gain more knowledge about their bodies. Furthermore, GPs and other clinicians involved in breast care would likely be the first point of contact if women were notified of having dense breasts, and there may be a high interest in undergoing additional supplemental screening. Therefore, these clinicians would need training and support to provide advice about breast density to women, if breast density notification becomes widespread across Australia. Pandya, T, Lou, Z, Dolan, H, Hirsch, J, Brennan, M, Kusami, N. Nickel, B. Australian Women's Responses to Breast Density Information. A Content Analysis. Int, J. Environ. Res. Public Health 2023, 20, 1596. Open Access. Thanks for watching.